I'm going to introduce now the, the team uh, from BAM, or my, my colleague, Mihail Kiyohane, and just a few words about BAM as we get going. Um, BAM FM in Ireland is part of the Royal BAM Group. Um, as you may know, it's about a 7 billion euro a uh, year in annual revenue. They have operations in the United Kingdom, Netherlands, Ireland, as well as Germany and Belgium. Their focus areas include construction, infrastructure, and facilities. And to date, we've had about a, a, a very tight uh, five-year strategic relationship um, with this company. And their broader objective is really to transform themselves into a, di a digital construction firm. And just a point here about where uh, we've been with BAM Ireland. So we presented at this, this UK construction event 12 months ago. Uh, and it was in Birmingham a year ago. And we made, um, it was interesting because we just at that point had not even launched building ops. But we just had some slides and a video and such. And it was interesting that Paul Brennan, who's here in the audience today, um, you know, saw the, the presentation and made a commitment and spoke to me all to say, look, I think we should try this product. And they came on board, I think it was in the summer. And it was, you'll see from their presentation what incredible success they've had just picking up a new product, something that, that's you know, fresh and mobile and relevant. And they've done great things with it. So it just shows how fast someone can have quick success with the, this kind of new you know, mobile first nimble technology. So I'd like to uh, introduce Mihal. Uh, he's the general manager of the FM team in Ireland. And I believe he did establish their practice there based on winning a key PPP contract. And again, as I've already mentioned, he's both been a great champion for us externally with the product, but also within their, their multiple FM uh, groups. Thanks very much, Brooke. Um, so is BIM really of use in operating facilities? Uh, some would say yes. Um, but the question really is uh, why? What does BIM do for operators? Uh, apparently, it makes life easy. And that's what we've been told by the experts. It makes clients' lives easier, the end users' uh, life easier, facility operators and facility, facility managers. Um, and again, this is what we've been told for the past number of years. So at the moment, we have about 2.4 billion euros worth of buildings uh, in our PPP portfolio alone, um, and all but kind of 25 to 30 year maintenance contracts. So as the operators of these facilities, we need to know if that's true. So a couple of years ago, we won a PPP contract called Schools Bundle 4, about 70 million euros of a schools contract across four projects. Um, and this is going to form an ideal test for us because 7D BIM or BIM to FM was a contractual requirement. So previously when our construction company completed a project, they used to hand us both a digital and a physical loan M file together with all of the room data sheets, operating manuals, drawings, specifications. Um, and then we would have to manually upload all of this information into our FM system. So hundreds of manuals, thousands of lines of data and spreadsheets, and a large task for our staff and our construction team. Um, and with BIM, we're now seeing a multiplication of this data. This data is becoming far greater. Um, and as you all know, the buildings are becoming much more complex for a variety of different reasons. So we just show some of our um, existing projects at the moment, some recently developed projects. That's the NATO headquarters. It's a half a kilometer long by a half a kilometer wide. So the scale alone makes it quite complex. Uh, the Zaha Hadid designed Port House in Antwerp with its unique geometry. Uh, the Co-op building in Manchester, which you may be familiar with, is one of the most environmentally friendly office buildings in the world. The Al Hitmi building in Doha, which has to contend with harsh environments and a very complex facade. The Kengo Kuma Design V&A Museum in Dundee, which really tests building fabric and building composition. And then we've won Albert Key and Cork, which is the most intelligent building in Ireland, uh, with its advanced access control, BMS, ICT infrastructure, uh, and climate management. Uh, and typically, these buildings are typical of what we're seeing in construction. Uh, more data, more IT, and more controls. And we want this information, but we also want to know the asset history from construction. Um, basically, what systems caused issues? You know, did there, was there an issue at commissioning stage? Uh, what plant was replaced? If plant was, if, if plant was replaced, was there a building fabric issue? Was there a leak in the building? If there was a leak in the building, how was it fixed? Um, to get this information easily, we needed a new system. We actually needed to completely change, change direction. 
because we don't want spreadsheets, we don't want uh, hundreds of manuals, and we don't want thousands of drawings. We just want the information. And the construction company, as you all know, have much more important tasks just before they hand over a building. So we looked at a multitude of systems, systems that had complex COBE data drops, systems that could upload CSV files, systems that could scan barcodes and assets. But the real key was quality of information, ease of handover from the construction team, and something that was easy for us and our end users to use. So this time last year, we started working with the building ops team. And after evaluating all of the CAFM systems that were out there, we decided that uh, going with building ops was the way forward. At that point, did building ops do everything we needed it to do? No. Uh, was it a finished product? No. But we'd faith in Jason and Lyra and their team, um, and they promised to deliver a system by Q1 of 2016. So they told us, just set out what you want. Tell us what you want, and we'll deliver it. So we started to set out what we wanted in the system. We wanted to be able to collect all of those gigabytes of valuable data from the BIM models and transfer it with the click of a button into FM. Now there's a simple export code which transfers all of the selected data in BIM 360 field directly to ops. So that was the first major uh, requirement fulfilled. But we also wanted a system that, it, that did quite a lot more, something that provided our SHEQ checklists, something that uh, delivered our PPM programs, something that acted as our help desk, which is critical to our business, something that where we could scan a QR code and would bring us to all the O&M data. We wanted live links to the BIM models, um, and that was quite important for us in, in, in developing these systems. And we needed a system to have alarms for contractual requirements and service level agreements, so it would prompt us for, for where issues arise. And we wanted it to work in BIM and non-BIM projects. We wanted an easy to use interface, and we also wanted it on an app, and we wanted it to self-generate reports. And they under-promised uh, and over-delivered. So this is some snapshots from our, our system today. So we have a, an easy to use interface, as you can see. Uh, it generates its own report. It's all backed up by the asset information. And we have a very simple to use app. One of the issues that, that I have is trying to keep on top of what's happening in the day to day in our facilities. Um, who's performing? What projects are performing? Is there an issue arising? But now I have all of that in a live dashboard on my phone. And we can click quickly and easily search through any of the assets in the building. And all of, that, all of that asset information is then backed up by the O&M information. Our business has become much more efficient uh, due to this change. But to, to put it into context, inputting and cleansing this data um, previously for a, a PPP project took about four months for a dedicated resource prior to handover. So this orange block re represents the amount of time that took. The green block, which is about to appear, will represent how long it took to get the exact same data into building ops. So it took about 30 minutes per project. And previously, it was taking us about four months. Similarly, in the next slide, the orange ball represents the amount of time it took to log a basic task in our previous system. The green ball represents the amount of time it's taking now in building ops. It's, about a it's less than a fifth of the time. To put this into context, we had 8,500 tasks logged in our system last year in on one project alone. And again, to, to access technical data is generally taking us quite a bit of time in the CD environment, wherever, wherever, wherever it resides. It's typically taking us about six minutes. In building ops, it's taking us about 20 seconds. If you're on site, in situ, and you scan the barcode, it's taking about five seconds. We're also seeing an improvement in our reporting. Um, pretty much all of our logged items now, 100% of them have detailed information. We're seeing photographs on 82% of our logged items, our reactive items. That was previously about 17%. So 7D BIM actually does make life easier. And our clients and the client relationships that we have are really important to our business, transparent reporting, and the easy system, and, and, and the easy system that we have here is making these relationships a bit better. And it's making us more efficient. So the question is where to next? Um, I think it's to the next D of BIM, whatever the next D is. We hear, depending on what country you're in, what 60 is, what 70 is, what 80 is. 
be honest, I'm not really sure what dimension we're working in, but the, the next step for us is where BIM is going to ultimately um, provide a platform. Uh, and it's going to provide a platform towards self-managing buildings. And it'll be the foundation to enable a lot of, I think, exciting developments in IoT and robotics. And our business and facilities manager is about to change quite dramatically. At the moment, we're very much a, a people-focused business. We manage lots of people and lots of staff. And it's very labor-intensive. But this is going to evolve to a system that's mainly managing robotics, automation, IoT, and systems. So at the moment, we're currently working on delivering all of our floor cleaning utilizing robotics. So the initial trials that we've carried out suggest that that technology is feasible and it's viable, and it'll have a less than one year payback for us today. So we're working with the Autodesk Building Ops team. Can we take this a step further? Can we move to the next D? Can we get into a situation where, in the BIM model, we can select a number of spaces, ask the robotics to go clean th those spaces, and then for the robots to report back and say that the spaces have been cleaned? That, that is feasible, and that's feasible in the short term. And ultimately, what we wanted to get, get to a situation whereby the access control will be linked to the robotics. So when you leave your office and it's beyond 5 o'clock in the evening, it'll know that you have left the office and it'll know that your office needs to be cleaned. So as I said earlier, uh, or as a lot of the, the guys have said earlier, in the past 100 years, construction in FM hasn't changed that dramatically. Yeah, machinery has made things more efficient, but we still manually lay blocks. We still manually plaster walls, paint walls. And FM is quite similar. The industry has evolved. The industry has, has, has become a, a, an industry, I guess. Um, but we're still manually cleaning floors and washing windows. That's, un that's just until now. All of this is changing, and it's, it's going to change quite dramatically. And BIM is going to be at the center of all of that, and it's going to be a real enabling tool. And I think what we're doing now in our generation is the evolution of how facilities are managed and how they're going to be constructed in the, in the near future. Um, and I think that we're in for a very exciting few years. Thank you.